Hey folks, I'm going to start doing some videos on Inkscape and how to learn the very basics of Inkscape and be able to do designs and bring them into design space. And these are going to be very simple, what I call challenges. And they're going to be pretty quick videos. And what I'd like to see people do is to follow the video. These are for really beginners. And, um, you know, if you've been using Inkscape for a while, you might want to watch it. You might pick up a thing or two. I don't know. If I, do, if I do something wrong, please let me know. I know there are some veterans out there uh, that know more about the application than I do. But um, I'm going to try to do some very simple uh, shapes, simple designs, and progressively increase the difficulty of the designs in order to uh, help people learn Inkscape and how to do designs for uh, creating SVG files, especially for bringing into design space. So um, I'm going to switch over to the computer and get started. And again, uh, these, these are going to be a series of what I call challenges. And when you complete a challenge, I would encourage people to um, uh, post it out online and, and post a screen capture of it or, or your little thing that you cut out or whatever just to show that you did it and uh, show your progress and, and what you're learning and uh, tag me in it and I would appreciate it and hopefully this will be helpful to you. So I'll switch over to the computer and get started. So I'm using Inkscape version 0.48.5. There is a newer version on their website at the time of this filming. I think it's 0 0.91. And for the most part, the functions are going to be the same. They're going to work the same. There may be some differences in how it looks or maybe uh, where something's located. Uh, so if you want to follow along exactly like I do and you want it to look exactly like mine, download the 0.48.5 version. Otherwise, most things should be pretty close. You shouldn't have too much difficulty finding things. So, real quickly, uh, the tools we're going to use in this um, version, we're going to be using a couple of menus at the top. We'll be using the selection tool, the node editor, and a couple of the basic shape tools down here. And don't let all the additional toolbars and functions that you see around the edges of the screen overwhelm you and confuse you. We're not going to mess with any of those at this time. We're going to do some, just a couple basic shapes, and uh, we'll get started. So the first thing I like to do is I like to remove this page border. So I go to File, Document Properties, and uncheck the box that says Show Page Border. Now a lot of people think that your design has to be within that box for it to save properly, but that's not the case. You just turn it off. I just find it annoying when I'm trying to do a design and I like to turn it off. That's just a personal preference. So the first thing we're going to do is insert a square. So we'll click the square tool uh, over here. And we're going to hold the control and shift keys while we draw the square. Now, I was selected on red down here at the bottom on your color selection tool. And you can tell here where it says fill. And also up at the top right where it says fill what color you're going to create. By holding the uh, control shift key, it allows us to make a symmetrical square. So it's the uh, same dimensions with times height. If I do not hold the control shift key, it will simply allow you to draw a rectangle or square in whatever shape or size you want. So now we'll move this to the middle of the screen and when I click on it you notice that I get arrows. And the first set of arrows that you see are arrows that you have, allow you to adjust the size and the shape. If you click the object a second time you get rotate arrows. And so you can grab those and turn your objects on the design. So a couple of shortcut keys I want to share with you. The plus and minus keys on your keyboard allow you to zoom in and out. So plus zooms in, minus zooms out. If you click on an object like this and select it, you can press the number three key on your keyboard to go full screen with your zoom. And if you make a mistake, let's say for example you accidentally delete an object, you can press Control Z to undo that action, and you and can, the undo action will keep several steps in a row, so you can undo several steps. Uh, and Control Y is redo. So if you want to redo a step or undo it, Control Z or Control Y, those are very useful sh keyboard shortcuts uh, for you to learn to get used to using. So next, we're going to convert this object to a path. So we'll select it. We'll go path and uh, object to path. Now if you remember from my first video I explained that your design needs to be all paths and that is the path the, along which the blade or the pen is going to move once you bring your design into design space. So next we're going to insert a, another basic object. We'll insert a circle and this time we'll again hold control and shift and draw that circle and now we will go to path 
object to path. So now with our node editor, we will uh, click this tool here. This is the node editor, and when I select it, you'll see that, that I get these little nodes. If I select this object, I get those little nodes. Okay, and I'm going to adjust the shape of this box by grabbing this node with my mouse, click on it and hold down. I'm going to drag it down here. Then I'm going to do the same thing with this one and drag it over. And we're going to make a trapezoid. It doesn't have to be exact, so just drag it down there as best you can. Uh, again, we're just playing around and learning. And next, we will go back to our selection tool and we'll grab our circle and we'll put it right on top. We're going to move it down just a little bit so that it's overlapping uh, on the uh, trapezoid. So if I highlight both of those, you can see by the bounding boxes that those two objects are overlapped. And next, I'm going to go to the Path menu, and I'm going to select Union. And now, as you see, that has made it all one object. So Union on the Path menu is similar to Weld in Design Space. So now we've made this all one object. And so next, we're going to grab another object, and we're going to use this star. And this time, we'll select Black before we do this, just so that we can see it better on top. And we'll just drag it out. And again, we'll go path, object to path. And we're going to put this over top of the uh, trapezoid. And next, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the layers. So you have layers in Inkscape just like you do in um, Design Space. Now, I'm not working with necessarily with layers. I'm working with the objects, though. So uh, I don't really mess with the layers much. Uh, you're working with objects, so think of these objects uh, positions as your layers, just like in Design Space. So I can select the larger object, the red object, and I can come down here and say Raise to Top. And now as you see, the star is behind that object. So just wanted to show you that. And so we will lower it to the bottom so that the star is on top again uh, so that we can see it. So now I'm going to select both of, these, both of these objects, and in Design Space you can slice if you have two objects selected, no more, no less. So you can do the same thing in Inkscape, and I'm going to cut out this star from the red object. So I've highlighted both of those, and I'm going to go to Path and select Difference. So now we have our object, and we have a cutout in the center, and I'm not sure what we'll call this, but uh, it's just a shape we're playing around with to learn. And one of the things that you can do in Inkscape is go to View, Display Mode, Outline. And this will show your paths along which your pen or your blade are going to cut. So that's a useful tool to check your SVG file. And so we'll go back to Normal View. And we're going to save this as a file and call it Challenge 1. And we want to save this as a plain SVG file. And we'll save it. And now I'll switch over to Design Space and we'll upload that image. And we see our preview. It looks just like it did in Inkscape. And we'll insert it into our project. And we'll adjust the size a little bit and click Go. And you'll see that it shows the paths just like it did in Inkscape when we viewed the outline. So hopefully this has been helpful to you as your first step towards learning the very basics of Inkscape and how to do a design and bring it into design space. So uh, I'll be posting more of these videos. And if you've gotten this far and everything worked out okay for you, please post a, a screen capture out there in uh, the Facebook groups and tag me in it, and I would appreciate it. Here's a list of the things that you learned in this video challenge. You learned how to use the selection tool and how to move objects around, resize them, and rotate them. You learned how to use the node editor and how to adjust nodes and readjust the shapes of objects. You learned how to insert basic objects and how to use the control shift key when you're inserting objects to keep them symmetrical. You learned how to convert objects to paths, which is very important. And you also learned some shortcut keys. So you learned how to zoom in and out with your keyboard to using the plus and minus keys, as well as the number three key to zoom in on a, uh, an object full screen. You learned that the control Z combination keys and control Y are undo and redo. You also learned how to use the fill color and how to know what color you are selected on. You also learned how to use the path union command to weld, which is the 
uh, same thing you do in design space and also the path menu um, difference command is the same as slice in design space you learn how to save the SVG file remember to always save as a plain SVG and you learn how to import the design into design space if my video has been helpful to you please subscribe to my channel and after you subscribe be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video you can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.